All right, guys, we've got a very, very special guest on today for Black Metal Legends Part 4. It's Tobias from Dark Space and Paysage TV. And it's an extreme honor to have him on the channel. It'll be, it's great to, great to have you on. So welcome, to buy, Tobias, for Black Metal Legends. Thanks. Let's talk about guitars first. So your guitar collection, um, what, what do you have right now? Can you see it? Just about. I can just see the um, headstone. I can't really see the name or anything. Oh, is that a West one? Weststone. Yeah. Oh, Weststone. Yeah, yeah. They're um, they're not made anymore, are they? Um. Well, they restarted, I think. But this is like from the eighties, and um, yeah, I actually got into uh, Weststone because of a friend of mine. Um, he got one of these uh, as a birthday present from his sister. And um, I got one to use when I started to play guitar from a, a friend of my dad's he used to play music with. And so I just ended up with these guitars and I'm, I was just always totally happy with, with, uh, with them. It's that the tone is excellent. Um, it has the right atmosphere for the kind of music I create and um they're really, really easy to play. It's like it's really smooth and 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 you don't need a lot of pressure. You don't need a lot of muscle uh, energy or anything. You know, it just flows. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just my thing made oh. in Japan from the 80s. <laughs> um, Actually, a rather cheap guitars back in the days, but uh, they just have something. Yeah. That's sweet. And the guitar you're holding right now, um, what recordings have you done with that one? Basically everything for uh, Besage Diver. Yeah, that's my Besage Diver guitar. Okay, cool. And is the other Weststone the Dark Space one? Yeah. Can I see it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have two of those. Oh, amazing. <laughs> but one is in the band room right now, so I only have one at home. Oh, look at that. So, um, yeah, for Dark Space, I was looking for, like, you know, uh, just a different design, basically, because it was, or still is, kind of important to us that it also uh, fits the whole scenery. And, uh, well, this just doesn't look Dark Space, you know. <laughs> Or not dark space enough. Yeah. Um, but this does. I mean, it's it's like a spaceship. Oh, it's... It... The whole design. And uh, so I was looking for, for uh, some other design, and I was open to another brand or anything, but uh, I saw that one on eBay. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> it's a Weststone, and it has like a, a really space design to it, so I have to have it. And um, originally it was red. Mm -hmm. So they came in black, red, and white with like red stripes, very 80s. <laughs> yeah. Right. But um, yeah, and the one I got, that's actually the other one in the band room, the, the, the one I got first, mm. um, it had an, uh, it didn't have the original uh, pickups anymore. It had uh, a single uh, active EMG setup. And that was just perfect for dark space because it made the sound a bit more brutal. Mm. And um, yeah, so I stayed with that setup. This guitar actually has a Seymour Duncan pickup right now because yeah. I was, I was uh, yeah, just for testing, basically. Okay. And it has a very distinctive tongue too. But I think I will, I will uh, stick with EMGs for dark space, that's for sure. But maybe for next Beisage Diver, I will use that one because it's quite uh, a cool um, pickup for black metal, actually. And uh, it's, it has a pretty cold tone, so that would fit well. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Because that's, that's one thing I wanted to ask. Like, What's your preference compared to the EMG uh, to the Seymour? But it seems like you've explained it. Um, I would say the EMG is a bit more... Hmm. Uh, a bit, bit more death metal like, 
probably. So for for like the uh, uh, these shocking riffs we have in Dark Space, it's it's very powerful. Um, we just always have to, or I always have to to watch it that that these uh, parts are not too heavy compared to the more like black metal fast picking stuff. Hmm. Um, but no, I, I just feel very comfortable with it. So uh, I stick with these. Yeah. But it's just one pickup down at the bridge. No, bridge is up. Bridge, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, oh, a, you know, uh, that's cool. No, I'm, I get that because I've, tr I've tried both of those pickups and I do find myself leaning towards the EMG. Okay. Just just because like you said it's that a little bit more brutal it's a it's got like um it's got like less mids like it like you said mm -hmm. in a death metal way but it really, yeah. really helps for um lower tunings and especially some of the chugging stuff and mm -hmm. um, uh, before before we talk about like um the chugging and the musicality and stuff is it, um what what um amps are you using like <laughs> by yourself and um, auto -life? okay um well I use this one. That's my amp. That's it. Whoa, what is that? It's a Zoom 9050. Made in Japan also in the 90s. And um, this is actually my preamp. So for, for life and also rehearsing and stuff, uh, I use this one for, for dark space uh, with, with a different effect though. I have different effects for dark space and, and Pesach Diva. And um, uh, this thing is also stereo. And for dark space, I use it stereo. And for, for, um, for well, the amplifier, I have a, uh, a Mesa Boogie. 290 mm -hmm. with two caps okay. also in stage. that's basically my setup um for dark space i uh, life i also use um a equalizer for both channels mm -hmm. just to smoothen it a bit because the equalizer of this effect unit it's basically just an effect unit um this is a bit yeah you can't do enough for a really smooth sound and it tends to have a bit uh, too much. Um, uh, it's a bit too 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 much in the f about four four thousand hertz. Uh, it's that's that's where also where the uh, sh comes from. <laughs> it's basically because of this unit just has a bit much in there, and I smoothen that out uh, for dark space. So it's it's a bit more. But, but, you know, we, we do a lot of uh, sound design. We just have um, reshaped our sound recently in, in the band room because we uh, uh, we always develop and, and go further. And I have also tried to um, use, like, other um, stuff like Axe Effects and, and uh, Camper. And, and, but it's just, it's just not, just doesn't have this magic. Mm. This, this unit has it's uh just amazing um it's it's digital so um yeah it came out around i don't know 94 95 something like that and uh actually uh got one from from a, a friend of mine back in school because he had one and um uh, I was like, yeah, this is great. I could really create the sound that I can use and record with directly without having to to uh, fuss around with uh, amps and stuff. So uh, I have no idea about amps, basically, because of it. You know, I mean, um, we learned a lot. And uh, Tsaral uh, from Dark Space, he's, he's using um, other gear and he's, he's really into amps, uh, but at the very beginning, he also just had a uh, effect unit from Boss, like a foot pedal. That was it. Oh, wow. But at some point, it was just not enough anymore. So uh, we we had to go on. And um, yeah. Epic. Okay. So <laughs> okay, let me see if I've got this right. So when you're... Um... When you're playing live, you have you have that uh, that Zoom effects unit, and then yeah. you have that as a preamp into an amp. Yeah. 
all your effects and then that's how you oh my okay okay because i was thinking because um you know i think that's what it is it's that level of kind of i think old school digital technology with this kind of really really fat tube amp sound that gives yeah. that kind of really heavy push um yeah. the dark space live tone has because yeah uh, like I said on, on the email, I was at Cosmic Void. And yeah. I, like, <laughs> I remember me and my, me and my friend, um, Dave, he's, he's an old friend of mine, and we, we both love the fuck out of Dark Space. Well, I, I, like everyone else was there in the room just like watching you guys. And then there's me and Dave at the front with huge smiles on our faces. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. that was you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, so I just want to get this right. So all the uh, Paysage Deve stuff you've used, um, that Zoom pedal, was that with the Mesa Boogie amp that you're using as well? Um, no. Okay. That's for Dark Space. Okay. Actually. So um, I um, always, or like, you know, in the beginning, I recorded with an 8-tracker. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Yamaha MD8 was like with a uh, mini disc data it's a different format than audio mini disc and um because i couldn't afford a computer and the computers back then weren't just good enough for really like you know recording and um so i only had eight tracks <laughs> and i always recorded uh three um guitar tracks and two were directly from the effect unit and one was uh mic mic from a um uh marshall what's what's it called 8080 i think and it's it's a solid state it's like uh with a it's, it's a combo with like one single 12 inch speaker and um um well at least the um i'm, I'm not sure some some part of it i don't know if it's the preamp or amp is, is solid state and i i think uh they also had that as like a head unit and as far as I'm uh, informed, uh, Chuck Schaldiner from Death used that one. Yes. Uh, the so he, he played with solid state amp. Yeah, yeah. So he had a very distinctive sound too. And uh, But this was also just coincidence. I mean, all of this was kind of coincidental um, because this was a, a, the amp of a friend of mine and I didn't have any. So I was like, can I lend it for recording? And yeah, that's, that's how it ended up. But... This one has a really good tone. I think even you two used it on 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 some of their recordings because of this distinctive tone it has, and it's perfect for black metal. I mean, it's you don't need more, you know, you don't need need a huge amp to to make a recording. You know, you just have a, to have a good tone. So, uh, yeah, that's that's basically how I did it. Nowadays, I do it a bit different. I. I always uh, experiment with different amps we have some <laughs> we still that that marshall 8080 we we have a uh a jcm 900 with but with two also single 12 inch uh, cabinets which uh actually have a really good uh, sound too but that they are more like they're, they're not uh, very aggressive so for for like more to to add some tracks guitar tracks to give it more depth it's perfect mm. so um yeah it just everything has like its own character and you just have to play and find play with it and find your sound yeah yeah of course of course because i love the um i love those amps as well the valve states um i've got one here the vs 100 it's a yeah this thing i've i've done I've done so many shows with it, and um, it got, and that's one thing that I make quite a big point, and I, I'm really glad you touched up on as well, is when you talk uh, just about trying loads and loads of gear and sculpting the sound, because there's no perfect tone. There's It's more the case of, like, th there's a tone for each purpose, and some people might like it and some might not. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then there's certain gear that people really enjoy that's used on a lot of stuff, but a lot of people don't like, for example. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I was um, I was talking to Necromorbus about the um, PV fifty one fifties and six five oh fives. Like personally, mm -hmm. like in the room, I'm not a big fan, but I like how they sound on recordings. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's, it's just really yeah. interesting. And I'm um, talking about gear, and I think it's great that um, 
that you're sculpting the sound as well. Diving more into like the the sound, um, mm-hmm. what kind of what was the influence of having um, super super heavy chugging riffs in Dark Spaces music? Oh, I don't know. I guess it has to do with um, me growing up with death metal and black metal alike. So I never um, had this anti-death metal sentiment <laughs> at all. You know, I, um, well, maybe nowadays death metal, I don't know. I, I'm not very much into the te- technical stuff, more like the atmospheric stuff. But I mean, when I was 15, uh, death metal was, was big and I listened to a lot of stuff. Um, also, when I started playing, uh, first stuff I, I played was uh, Grave and Asphyx and, and stuff like that, which is pretty simple to play, actually, and, and it's a good start because, um, yeah, you, you don't have to know much about or don't have to have a lot of playing skills and uh, already you can, like, play a song. I know, it's great. <laughs> And so I also, um, like the first uh, Besage Diva recordings were actually um, played uh, with a guitar, with this guitar tuned to like grave level, which is like even lower what, what we play at uh, Dark Space. I don't know the exact tuning, but it's it's pretty low. Uh, so playing black metal with this low tune is is also quite a challenge because the strings are, you know, for the fast stuff and single single uh, strings, it's uh, pretty tough to play. But I didn't I didn't really think of things uh, back then. You know, I just wanted to create music uh, that I personally like. And um, yeah, sound was always very important to have like um, a certain atmosphere to even to to you know pull or push the button for inspiration for me it's it's very important to have a, a, a atmospheric sound i mean i can't i can't just play with any guitar or i can't play with any distortion or if if i don't feel it then nothing will come you know yeah so yeah. Um, this is very important yeah no, for sure, for sure. And um, it's interesting you mentioned sound as well um, and, and feeling as well, because that's it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because um, one of the differences between black and death metal is this level of, I, I don't know, like both both musical genres are very emotional. However, yeah. I think black metal kind of embodies the emotions in a different way. Yes, but it's very difficult to explain, and and I haven't really thought of like the best words or the best kind of descriptions because, like, um, because the thing is, is like as because we know what atmosphere means, but then it's the case of what is atmosphere, like what mm-hmm. what defines kind of like black metal atmosphere, like what mm-hmm. is black metal atmosphere, and um, and talking about like the the soundscape of your music was it was it intentional to create this kind of ambiance with your projects um, because Pesage oh. is um is a very kind of it, it's it's more emotional than dark space but it's just as bleak and like harrowing mm-hmm. in a certain way um it's very easy to get drawn into the music like um when making this kind of music is it intentional is it all based on feeling or is there more kind of like calculation to it Oh, okay. Um, well, it is intentional, but for me, like the, the perfect, it, it's like, um, well, it's difficult to explain. Um, it's intuition and thought in perfect balance. That's where the best magic happens. So it's not... It's it's like um, diving into chaos, infinite possibilities, and uh, if if you are able to get in there in this space or sphere or whatever you want to call it, um, it's also quite difficult to focus on one thing because you have infinite possibilities, and so you you kind of pick that one out 
and let it flow. So that's the more like intuitive part. But you have to like kind of give it directions with with your head, with your brain, with with thoughts. So it's um it's a symbiotic process for for me. And this doesn't always happen, you know. Sometimes I pick up the guitar and play, and I think, oh, that's it's all just boring. And even though I had the feeling, oh yeah, let's play today, I have a good feeling, and it's like nothing is happening. And on the other hand, it's just like just playing a little bit, and then it just zooms me in and, and it flows. Mm. Kind of magic process, difficult to explain. Yes. But I, I think it makes a lot of sense because um, it has, it's curious because it's very similar to how I write as well. Because when I when I'm writing songs, it's more the case of trying to use like this subconscious level intuition where it's kind of like I'm just going to play and let my fingers do the work and then a riff just pops out. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, you need to be calculated because it's like, OK, I need to make a, I need to turn this into a song. It's kind of like, how am I going to do it? How do I want this song to move? Do mm -hmm. I want this kind of section? Do I want, um, do I want like something more, uh, you know, more atmospheric and bleak and more tremolo picked riffs as opposed to like chugging thrash riffs or whatever? And um, yeah, it's just it's just a case of just being calculated, but making sure everything flows and feels nice. And mm -hmm. when you're listening back to it as well, everything has to sound like it belongs there. Yes. And having this like seamlessness of like one section flowing to another, I think is um, for me anyway, a really, really important part of songwriting. Yeah, absolutely. But that's, that's also very intuitive for me. Yeah. It's, and you know, I'm, I'm kind of a picturesque person if I can, if that's the right word. So mm -hmm. I, I see things in, in patterns. It's, it's not like, it's rather abstract, but it's pictures. And so um, I can really see the the big picture. I have no problem with that. So I, I don't have problem like creating long songs or even have a, have a, a feeling for a whole album, which is like a, a story in itself or, or like even bigger. So uh, yeah, but um, like where where it has to go, where where is the song flowing? It's uh, very in intuitive. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I think I think that's great as well. Like seeing the bigger picture and. Because when you're um, when you're working on an album, you can't just think of like because there's so been there's been so many times where you've I've, you've probably had this as well, but there's so many times where I've bought an album thinking like oh this song's amazing, the rest of the album's going to be amazing, and it's not. Yeah. <laughs> and and like having an album that's like good from start to end, um, yeah, and and flows just sh like to me anyway makes me think like there's so much more thought in the writing process, yeah. and it's kind of like someone's really really thinking about the bigger picture and um i i yeah. love that so much because everything has a place and it's quite nice as well um having the songs be completely different and a bit more unique as well yeah i love that and then go and um, that leads us nicely to um like talking about some of your albums and i just love how everything is where it should be in yeah <laughs> all, of, all of your releases as well like um like if we take um dark space three for example which is probably my favorite uh, mm -hmm. of dark space albums i can understand yeah <laughs> yeah it's um just the way it moves as well like um like for example we, if we take the songwriting in especially towards the end part of dark space 3.13 mm -hmm. holy fucking shit man <laughs> that is okay that is, right. that yeah. was, you know, where it just kind of just becomes, gets more and more and more and more. Because yeah. the song kind of lulls you in, like it's just floating. And then, and then it's just. Yeah. That's actually uh, stuff that Sara wrote. Oh, is it really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, sweet. And um, that, yeah, it's just, just the way, yeah, it's just the way that song moves as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I love it as well. And then, you know, 3.12 is a really, really great one as well. Cause it's just, yeah. it's a bit more, it's more, um, it's a bit more in your face. Yeah. That one, you know, with like, that's also Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, 
But you know, th there's one thing that I wanted to ask about, and it's a very, very specific dark space writing uh, mm -hmm. technique, and it's a chord progression. It's this. It's it's when you do like the uh, the E to the D to the F. That one, and you just. Like who who coined that um, in dark space? Because it's a it's a core progression that you guys use a lot. And um, was that like a feeling thing? Was it calculated, or was, was it just no? It was, okay, okay. <laughs> no, um, no, it just sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool, yeah. <laughs> and that's the, yeah, yeah. No, that's amazing. No, it's um, you know, I'm I'm really not a good instrumentalist. Really not. I mean, I I also don't know a lot of of like uh, theories or or anything. I just um, all I can play is what I need to be able to write music. That's I think, in my opinion, where I'm good at. You know, create stuff, like create worlds. I tried rehearsing like really acoustic guitars, and and I I couldn't stay focused for for five minutes with rehearsing, and then I already I was like playing around and creating stuff, you know? So at some point I was like, okay, I just do that then. So uh, maybe I could do much more if I would be uh, a better instrumentalist, yeah. I also think that what the music that you make has such a unique sound and the way you play is is great. I don't think there's, a, I don't think there's much need for any of the technicality or anything, um, too complicated i think i think what you do is very um very purposeful and i think that's more important than technicality yeah yeah it's it's great if some someone can really play you know and and um but but it's not the most important mm. in in my opinion it's not not what i care about when i listen to music mm. what uh what i want to hear is is magic you know something that really moves me something that uh um where i th see things you know almost like movie like hmm. something um unique too something i haven't heard before something yeah very individual you know yeah 100 percent. because what makes a band good is that they're different and they have their own mm -hmm. kind of like signature and yeah. very, very special sound. And then that gives them so much more character than trying to sound like someone else or do something like another band. Something that you haven't heard before, because when I'm listening to music yeah. now, I want to hear things that I haven't heard before, mm -hmm. or I want to listen to something that I can learn from. Mm -hmm. Or I could be like, oh, that's really cool. What are they doing there? And it gets me more interested to listen and try and pick out yeah. all the notes and stuff. And um, like you and like you said before, think of like pictures and 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 soundscapes and and take your mind into a different place. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's a really really powerful thing. Then just think like, oh, these guys can play, or oh, this is kind of fun. It's a yeah. bit more. It becomes a lot more personal and I think meaningful when the music kind of affects you in a way so that you're thinking about bigger things than just the music. Yeah. I think that's really, really important. Yeah, and and going back, going back to um, going back to guitarists and actual playing. Like, who's your guitar playing? Like, who inspired you to pick up the guitar and want to play? And who are your guitar heroes? <laughs> oh, I don't think I have any heroes. <laughs> well, or... yeah, no, not really. I I don't know. I'm I'm not about people but like albums of course it, they were made by people so yeah maybe they are my heroes but the heroes i have are like specific albums i think yeah okay. and for a certain to a, to a certain extent the people behind it yes but uh uh well most inspiring was um that i just had to do it by myself because i was not satisfied where the stuff I was listening to, and I love to listen to the, these people or these bands where the, the direction they were going to, I was not satisfied satisfied with. So uh, mostly like Norwegian black metal bands from from like you know 
second wave of black metal and at some point I was just like no that's not what I see in the music so uh, but I want more of it <laughs> I was kind of uh, you know possessed with this kind of music and uh, I needed more so um, I just was like yeah instead of just complaining like dudes can't you do it like I want to have it uh, maybe I should just do it by myself you know and that's where I really started, yeah. Oh, I mean, I mean, if, when I was like fifteen in like ninety three, I um actually wanted to uh, start a doom metal band. I was also very much into doom metal and um, play bass and do vocals. That was my plan. Well, it didn't end it up like that at all. <laughs> so. Um, uh, it was difficult to find other people to to really start a band with, and I meant it very serious from from the beginning. And uh, so, at some point, I was like, "Okay, I just have to start learn how to play guitar to be able to create what I want to create." And uh, that was basically it. Yeah, that's when I started. Cool. So, what were the um what were the albums that inspired you the most? Um, well, what really, really pulled myself into black metal was uh, Enslaved Frost mm -hmm. and also uh, Viking League Veldi. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. Yeah. And that's also uh, was very inspirational for me for the length of the songs, because on this album, the songs are pretty long. Or um, at least before that album, it was not very common to have like 10 minutes songs. And I just love that. It's like, if something's great, I, I want to have it forever. You know, it just don't, don't end. <laughs> <laughs> and um, definitely uh, Burzum, for sure. Um, Vis Luise Taros and Philosophem. Also, that's some Engangvar. Not so much the first one, mm. but um, also uh, First Immortal, um, Dark Throne, the usual stuff, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Satyricon. Awesome. Yeah. And um, I guess that, um, see, that's one of the questions I wanted to ask you about. Like when, when you write your music, it's very, very hypnotic. And I think I think you've just kind of answered it there when it comes to like that kind of hypnotism, like the repeated sections. It's like you create something great and you just don't want it to end. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like if we if we um, go back to uh, like well, Burzum's a very good example because you've got you know Dunko Height with the dun 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 just yeah. going for ages and ages and then you got um Jesus Dodd, you know da, na, 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 na. like these long kind of repeated sections and riffs as well yeah you know enslaved writing long uh long songs as well so yeah i, I guess that's um yeah it's just interesting it's just interesting like having the parallels between um uh you know the inf the influence um and the influencer to, and creating the um the kind of end result and stuff no i think it, i think it's great some of my favorite sections in like the dark space songs is um not only like those super fast like tremolo picked riffs or like the like the hyper blasts behind them as well but you know when you kind of take it a step back and um well it's one of the songs on uh dark space four the album bam 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 these super percussive heavy riffs and just just it's like when i'm listening to that i'm just like yeah yeah keep going keep going like you've got something that's working so well but you've made it your own and it sounds cool as shit so yeah give me more of that yeah of that and um yeah going um like going back to uh cosmic void festival one of the songs that you guys played was like it must have been about like 20 minutes of like it was like a tw oh only <laughs> I was, I was say, like, oh yeah it was, i don't know how long it was but it was this really really epic song that yeah that's the new I, stuff 
Yeah, yeah. So that's um it's a bit longer. It's forty seven minutes. That one song. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the. Th I, I can't remember how long your set list was, but I know you guys played Dark Two Point One O, the new yeah. song. Was it just? Yeah, that was, if I remember correctly, because we have three different sets at the moment, yeah. um, uh, like a fifty-minute, a sixty-minute, and an eighty-minute set. So, um, if I remember correctly, <laughs> what we played at Cosmic White was the sixty-minute set, and that was yeah, two point uh, ten and um, Dark Space minus two. That's the new. Really. Oh yes, <laughs> and it's. Yes. Uh, 47 yeah. minutes yeah. oh my god yes it wasn't planned like that it's you know it's not we start like um okay let's do the longest song ever or, or something like that it just happens to be like that gotcha so <laughs> but that was gonna be one of my one, one of my questions is like what what um what do you guys think about when making a dark space set list is it is it time is there any songs that you particularly want to play or well of course we also always have like um yeah, how how long um, can we play? And so it's it's basically from from the organizers they they say how long they want us to play, and usually it's like uh, 50, 60 or sometimes seventy minutes set, but that's like the usual stuff. And so we have to find something that works together. You know, the songs is the, also also a live set is like uh, kind of a composition. So uh, it has to to flow into each other and and work as as a like an album, you know, as a whole story. And uh, we also uh, always have like the ambient stuff uh, in between the songs, and so uh, quite a lot of work to to do these sets. And uh, based on that, we try to find something that fits into like. 50 minutes which can be quite difficult with such long songs you know because like like okay this would be great but it's three minutes too long <laughs> you know okay three minutes we are like i think that should be okay you know but uh if it's like seven minutes then we're like yeah especially you know if you're a headliner it maybe doesn't matter that much but uh, if you have like other bands playing after you it's it's just a bit unfair if you play too long and if you play too short it's unfair for the audience in our opinion so uh, we really try to uh, yeah you know bring something um as as good as possible yeah as we can do you know always yeah for sure and what's your um what's your favorite dark space songs to play <laughs> well there are some that are a bit more difficult to play but um so it's not not it's it's it's, it's a bit more like you know sport <laughs> like dark 20 is 4.20 is is quite tough to play because it's also quite long and and uh, the speed is is just a little bit above being comfortable with it so it's it's quite um yeah quite an effort to play so we if we play or the shows we played that song live, it was always the last song. It fits perfectly as for as like the last song. And it's also because your muscles really need to be warm to be able to play that. Um, 2.10, I think, is a very good example. I really like to play that. I think it's, it's a really great song. So, uh, yeah. And... Other than that, I think I like all songs, you know. So uh, otherwise, I won't have released them. Definitely. Yeah. Um, seventeen, three point seventeen. Mm. I really like that one. It's also cool to play. Yeah. Oh, and and three point four, uh, fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. Doom kind of doom song. It's also great to play. But you really need something faster after that one <laughs> i, I can't play only doom it's it's not, <laughs> not for me <laughs> no that's sweet sweet that, and um what what about a um paysage de if you were to ever play that live what songs would you pick for um, a live um show? there's only um 
one album actually, Geister. Mm -hmm. That's that's could be possible to play live with like you know the masks and and stuff, but only with with these. And um, I just don't have the time to to do that, so it won't happen. Other than that, I I don't think it would make any sense to play any songs live, okay. in my opinion. Okay, why is that? Year, maybe. Yeah, why is that? Like, um, how come? Because um, I think, you know, speaking as, as a fan's perspective, I think it'd be quite cool if you got like a few of the um, few okay. other musicians involved and uh, just just had like a special um, special show or maybe a special tour or something. I think that could have been. I think that could be quite a special thing. Um, yeah, like some somewhere really high up in the mountains where you have to hike up you know <laughs> in winter of oh. course <laughs> just yeah like something that would be like a really momentous occasion and something that would require. yeah but yeah i don't know this is just really music it's 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 like a meditation it's it's ritual ritualistic it's it's meditative um and it's it's not meant for for um sharing in a in a audience okay. a big audience i think it's really something you have to hmm. focus on your inner self and that's what this music is about it's about it's it's like a diary to me you know i don't write a diary but i make my diary through music with besser stiebe it's very personal it's always very personal themes of course it's all metaphorical so you guys don't know what it's about but i do <laughs> <laughs> No, of course. Um, no, that that makes complete sense then. Yeah. And, um, like speaking of like the um, the themes of like both projects is is there like there's been no lyrics posted for any dark space material, and I think there's like a little bit of paysage Dive. Um, mm -hmm. And is the reason why you don't post the lyrics is is it because it's too personal, or is it to ha ha like kind of enhance the anonymity and the and make it seem a bit more mysterious or, or like what why how, how come any well, how come you haven't uh, posted any lyrics well besser Stiver has lyrics um it's all in german uh -huh. or swiss german uh -huh. so um there are translations around mm -hmm. i think um so that's that's not much of a secret mm -hmm. Um, of course, it's it's more like poetic, so um, um, describing feelings or sit not really situations, but more like yeah, also picturesque. You know, describing things or like, I mean, the whole theme is uh, is based around this wanderer wandering through this land of winter, which is Besage Diver, mm. and uh, it's all about that what what this person be it he or she depends on mm -hmm. who listens to it or perceives it for me it's a he <laughs> <laughs> that that's basically it you know so uh with with but with a dark space we don't have any lyrics we just simply don't have any lyrics we call it it's it's an own, own kind of language um we call it dark space ish <laughs> as uh, kind of yeah just the, the whole idea behind this to um sound alien it's like a, a language that doesn't exist here it's from oh. someplace else it's like oh can i do it now <laughs> something like that yeah so it it has like it has a form. It really could be a language, but it's not real words. Holy no, no, no earthly language. <laughs> that is fucking awesome. <laughs> that is oh dude, I I love how yes. Just <laughs> yes. Yes. It's so like, there simply aren't any lyrics for dark space. No dude, lyrics. It's like dark space is token of black metal, like you've made your own like language and yes themes and oh fuck yeah man that's so cool I kind of that. kind of world building yeah yeah i love that so much and i'm, I'm actually really like super super taken back by that because i thought all of the lyrics were um 
were going to be like some kind of English or some other language, but I didn't realize you guys actually created it. And yeah. actually, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. And who whose idea was it to create this language then? Oh, um, I don't know if it really wasn't like um, idea, you know, like it just happened to be that way. I, I also with Beza Stiebe, I do have lyrics, but um, uh, sometimes it's it's also just like fantasy language. You know, oh. it's, it's I, I focus more on on the sound than on words. Okay. So to create a, a certain atmosphere, and sometimes I just did something. I think it was on Winterkälte, on one song, and afterwards I was like, "What did I actually say?" and write the lyrics down from what I said that like sounds what I did and makes sense and sometimes I also write the lyrics first and then really sing it it was like quite a lot um involved was the case I did it like that so it's 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 different but uh, many songs there it's just like oh sorry about that it's not really like you know um that I really I write down the lyrics and then I sing it like in a classic pop rock scheme. You know, it's 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 really about the atmosphere <laughs> back there again. It's just really about that to to create it. It just has to to feel right to to feel it. It has to move you. You know, it has to make you emotional. Yeah, the, the most intense uh, vocals I ever did was on uh, Schnee 2, the second Schnee song. Um, I did the vocals. Usually I do the vocals in the band room because uh, at home it's a bit difficult with screaming and stuff. And um, I after the after I did the vocals to it, I just I kind of had like an emotional breakdown. I was just like crying. And crying and crying, it was like really like a dam broke. It was so intense. And you can really hear that in that song, I think. And it's also what I really like about this um, focus on recording only with Bezar Stieber. It's, it's like such a moment, you know, and, and just make that moment as, as magic as possible. And it's, it's, it's like a diary, you know, it's written down. It's like, that's it, you know, forever, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> And, and that was a really intense moment and i think that's i think that's one of the reasons why people connect with that music so much is because you can really hear that kind of like raw passion mm. as well and yeah like that's what i found like the music that resonates the most has the most passion and real right. kind of like emotion and real feeling behind things yeah. i think that's what music is about you know it's a language for emotion at first place not only, but that's that's like the main thing, in in my opinion, oh, for me yeah. personally. It yeah, is. I agree. I agree because all art is stemmed from emotion and well, emotion slash passion. But then, mm. like yeah, art is emotion. So everything, everything artistic and musical is just a, a level of emotion. Mm. And trying to trying to give off that emotion in the most um, authentic way possible, I think, is the tr I think the biggest goal for an artist is to try and make their music. And their emotions expressed in the best vessel and in the best form that they can. Yeah. 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 I think um, and I think that's so powerful as well. And I think that's what really, really helps people connect to music more as well. Cause people because you can kind of like you can smell when something is fake. And in like having like this yeah. kind of authenticity um in the music and like the passion and really, really feel like just feel it and yeah and it's interesting because like it's interesting because we're in a more digital age now where things aren't as um analog and things are more perfect now and um it, it's just in, it's, it's really interesting because like um after like having these uh chats with you know with everyone in black metal legends like um i was talking about this with nocturnal culto and necromorbus as well where it's kind of like things are getting a bit too kind of perfect yeah Kind of taking something away from the raw emotions like going back to paysage duvet like there's so much passion and and energy into it 
and it still kind of works even though for a lot of the releases the drums are programmed mm -hmm. and it and, and that was going to be one of the questions it's like because of the use of um uh programmed drums do you see i just want to hear your thoughts on it because i don't think that the programmed drums take away from any of the authenticity from any of your music um mm -hmm. and it, i actually kind of like how it's got this kind of um consistent robotic perfectness because that kind of builds its own sound and mm -hmm. and i guess i guess my question is well it's, it's two questions really is why did you de why did you uh, decide to use program drums and the second thing is do you think do you think program drums takes away from like the realness of the music not necessarily it just really depends on how you use it in my opinion um, with Dark Space, it was a very uh, clear decision that we want to have that as like a stylistically decision. We want to have that sound. We want to have that industrial kind of sound. Uh, definitely inspired also from from bands like uh, Mystico, mm -hmm. you know. So um, it's, it's it has to sound like a drum computer. So, uh, I mean, nowadays you can really program drums. You, you don't really hear it anymore if it, if it is a live drummer or not. You know, if, if you do it well and a person who understands uh, something about playing drums, you can do that. But that was never the goal with, with Dark Space. Uh, especially it was like, yeah, it has to have this sound that you really like are in somewhere in 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 space or in a in a spaceship you know some some cold cold space atmosphere uh that's perfect so uh it's it was a more like an artistic decision yeah definitely and with Bezash Diver, it was more like because I was too lazy to play drums by myself. <laughs> but also it was just it worked perfectly you know I was like hey it's it sounds fine and um if if it would ha wouldn't have worked, I, I would have played it live for sure, you know. Um, but it just, I didn't give that much thought about it with Besar Stieber. It just has to sound right and then let's let's do it. Let's go. So does, does that mean that there will never be a, a show or a dark space recording with a real drummer? No. Okay. Never. Okay, I fine. Think, well, never say never, but... I I would say 99.9% .9 no. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, no. Really, really, really slim chance. Um, no, it just doesn't make sense. It's It belongs to our distinctive sound we have. It's part of that. Gotcha. And will there be Dark Space shows uh, announced anytime soon? Are you, are you working on new shows? Are you thinking about new shows? Um, well, we we have one more show to go. Mm -hmm. in uh in december 9th uh, 8th of december in oslo oh yeah, 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 yeah. and uh, then we'll have a break for uh we will play at uh, uh beyond the gates in bergen next summer and also vienna and one in switzerland and that's most likely about it Okay. We really want to to work on new material on Dark Space Five, and I mean this Dark Space Minus Two. It was really like a, a, a experiment for us. We have a new bassist, as you might know. Sorg left the band, and uh, we had a difficult time within the band. It was really on brink of uh, um, breaking up totally. Oh. But uh, we have a. A new bassist is he's really great great guy uh professional musician so i mean you should rather have an interview with him regarding uh guitar playing than with me he's our bassist but he can play like 10 times better than me though 100 times better than me <laughs> <laughs> i think that's the goal now get um, you Get each member of the art space for black metal legend <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, great guy and uh, so, yeah, for us, it was like a new start. So uh, that's why this minus two to totally meant, um, yeah, made sense to us. And um, but the goal is the big goal is to uh, have Dark Space Five. 
someone in hopefully near future. We'll see. <laughs> Did um, East contribute to any of the writing on Dark Space uh, minus two? Uh, no, that's that's really just it's all mine. <laughs> I wrote the whole whole stuff, and I was really surprised because usually, uh, you know, I'm I'm more like the giving like the the basic. You know, it's like more, more like the composition. That's that's my part in the band, and of course, also uh, a lot of riffs in in that sense. But usually, we we like really do the details together. Hmm. And this time, it's like a a few things we changed. Um, uh, very important things. I'm very happy uh, for the other guys for their contribution. It's it's very important. Uh, but it's, it's it's all 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 everything was written by me in this time. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So I didn't really start it as as like a, a synthesizer only thing. Uh -huh. I made that a couple of years ago, and I was like, "Hey guys, I have this stuff. Uh, let's try it out with actually." including guitars how does it sound like and um, maybe it works maybe it doesn't and uh yeah the, the other guys were very happy with it they were like never ever anything before was that good <laughs> i was i was really surprised i didn't expect that at all because we we uh, often have quite some fights about the, the sound you know which is good makes makes things perfect or not it's not easy. Yeah. Of course, it's difficult situations, but uh, you know, it's like I'm here with no. It has to be this way. Yeah. Tara is like no. It has to be this way. Yeah. And we just we we, we can't compromise. Okay. And what happens is that what that the compromise is here. Gotcha. It's better than this or this. It's it's something bigger and and better. And both are happy or all three in this case are happy with it. Uh, East did a lot of um, what he contributed mostly was with uh, technical stuff. He knows so much about amps and, and microphones and recording. And uh, we learned a lot from him. And you will hear that on, on the recording of Minus Two. It's... It's still a totally dark space, but it's definitely uh, uh, not a progression in, in sound quality, in my opinion. Amazing. And um, when when's the release date? Or if what when's the proposed release, I guess? In February. It should come out in February. Oh, yeah. And is this with the Season of Mist as well? Yes. Oh sweet! I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a copy. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm so I'm always I'm always like whenever there's a new dark space, I'm like yeah. <laughs> Finally, it's been a very long time. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, I just I love it when you're writing music and you're coming up with riffs. Um, mm -hmm. and when you're when you're when you're writing, uh, is like when you're playing, are you thinking like oh this riff can work with paysage, or are you think oh this riff can work with dark space? Like how does that go? No, it's it's more um well sometimes, yes, this happens. It happened. But usually it's it's um it's it's a mental state, a different mental state. I have yeah, pictures. Yeah. I'm either in a winter landscape or in a spaceship or something like that, a planetary environment. So um that's that's and out of that it's automatically um this or that i don't okay. really have to um do anything else than that yeah gotcha. Gotcha. It's, it's also a different kind of uh songwriting with, with Pesa Stiva, it's much much more um yeah ritualistic um uh, meditative um repetitive so um with with dark space it's much more about um building songs with different parts Pesach, it can also be just like one riff for a whole song. You know? <laughs> of course, uh, Dark Space also has these parts, but it's it's much less, and um, it's it's more 
more half tones in dark space i think than yeah. it is actually yeah, yes oh, yeah 100 yeah because i i was actually thinking about this um the other day was the thorns album much of an influence to your playing and dark spaces music because there's a lot of there's a lot of writing in there that almost sometimes feels like proto dark space um like i think it's the third song on like the, the third or fourth song on the um, thorns album where it's like dun, 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 dun. like the whole yeah. song was was that album much of an influence um well it's it's an absolutely amazing album i always loved thorns it's it's just um uh, because it's it's just so unique you know it's it's I don't know. Can you say it's black metal? I don't know. It is metal, but what metal? It's Thorns metal, probably. Yeah. I don't know. Just like nothing sounds like that. You know, it's it's and and of course uh, a lot of the aesthetics he uh, has uh, with his music are are very similar or very close to to Dark Space. It's it's not identical, but it's very close. And uh, yeah, of course that was uh, an influence. Also, like like Mysticum was an influence and. Uh, corrosion of conformity blind for their first album was a big influence for me you know it's or, or suicidal tendencies or you name it it's 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 quite broad you know so um yeah. i picked all these things yeah uh and yeah well sometimes i even like to to be influenced from one specific album for something i do you won't hear it, won't won't sound the same or anything. It's not a copy, but sometimes I just really like to I want to be influenced by that. Like just to see what happened, what what I translate, what flows through me from from listening to, to that, you know. So I think that's also an interesting experiment to do. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And you know, working with Snorra, like he is he's awesome. Like he's one of the most creative people that I've ever that I've ever worked with. And he's just yeah. Years and, and you just able to create such, he's able to just create like such great concepts as well. And it's, it's and every time, yeah. it's, it's it's always just an honor. With the aesthetic of dark space, whose idea was it to have like the um like the kind of turtleneck, the corpse paint, and the um and this kind of um I don't know what it is like this kind of like robe thing. Mm -hmm. I swear, like wh whose idea was that, or was it like a collective idea? Oh, well, that's such a long time ago. <laughs> um. I don't know. I've, I've, I mean, um, it was definitely important that we have to have something um, unique. You know, it's it's important. Like, if if we go on stage, I was never really like fond of being on on stage. You know, it's, it's not that I want to go play live. I don't like being on stage. Mm -hmm. It's much better nowadays. Um, but back in the days, it was always uh, a huge stress. So I can totally understand people like uh, Fenris of Dark Throne who said, like, no, that's not for me. I tried it. I did it like two times or something, but that's not for me. I can totally understand. It was kind of similar uh, for me. But um, so I was like, OK, if we do it, it has to be fucking great. It has to be the best we can do. Because also in, in Black Metal, it was like one show or maybe two shows I can remember that I was like, okay, that did the music justice live. Other than that, it was just, no, it doesn't work live. just doesn't. And um, so I, I was definitely very strong with, with, with my opinion. If we do it, it has to be something intense, also visually on stage. Uh, but I think the, the idea came from Sadal with like skirts. Because in in uh, we also went to gothic parties and and stuff like that, and it was a thing to have like men's skirts. I was like, actually, this this looks really like like a priest or something. Um, I think also, um, uh, what was it called? The movie where there was was um, we we even have samples of that movie now. I don't recall the name. Um, dark something, um, dark city. Uh huh. I don't know. Do you know then the movie Dark City? I've not seen it, no. You should watch it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, uh, I've even seen that in, in the movies, like in the cinema back in the days when it came out. And you have like these um, alien creatures. They use uh, human bodies as a vessel and they have ropes like that. 
and uh, they're very pale, of course, because they're like basically using corpses as their vessels. And uh, that's that just was was a great visual to see, you know. Um, so I think it was mainly these aspects that led us there. It has, uh, yeah, something also priest like, you know. Yeah, and and that's um, it's interesting you bring that up because there's there's a sort of eloquence to it that really really kind of resonates with Dark Spaces music because it's because I remember um after watching you guys after Cosmic Void I was just thinking like you know no not only was it just a great experience but it was also just like a masterclass in in kind of rhythmic perfection and okay. And just making sure that every single note is perfect and in the right spot because it's like if if you or zara were just like that, that little bit out of time it would not have that kind of like yeah the impact as well and it's like that eloquence and it's like that level of discipline where it's interesting where you mentioned like priest the priesthood as well because it's like um mm -hmm. that level of just like a level of royalty where it's like you it's and, mm -hmm. and as well because it's like it's like everything needs to just be right you, you and you're confident about what you guys are doing and it's also at the same time very very hard to do the same thing over and over again mm -hmm. as a guitar player like if i just go i i can guarantee they'll be like on like the fourth repeat i'd want to change something as well yeah and just to keep that going as well and having <laughs> this kind of like discipline yeah like this this kind of yeah. like it's interesting it's like this very 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 clean look that's out of this world and, and different but also at the same time it's like extremely technical in in a rhythmic sense because yes. it's like there's no room for error kind of thing yes if, if yes one mistake just because one mistake could could destroy the whole flow of like this um hypnotic repetition of the riff yes yeah it's a very thin line in everything with dark space you know it can it can it could um go like this to like something ridiculous very quickly <laughs> you know or there so it's it's a very thin line where it works perfectly and we are we are always very um uh conscious about that or we try to be at least you know so not just like getting somewhere totally ridiculous you know some kitsch stuff other bands did that <laughs> like no we don't want to get there but with with this perfection yeah like even if it's it's really simple stuff it has to be as perfect as possible that's what we try to achieve i mean you know um almost at every every show we play there are like uh, some mistakes we do but we all, always find each other and usually the audience they don't care or don't care they don't mind it's not really um uh, they don't really hear it i think you know, if after the show we're like oh i did su such a bad uh, show today i fucked up there <laughs> it's like what you did uh, i didn't realize at all hmm. but with especially this rhythmic stuff um yeah that's uh, but you know behind the scenes um if if it uh, seems like that, uh, like talking about perfection to you, that we did something right, but behind the scenes, it's it's not like that at all. You know, there are a lot of doubts uh, about playing skills, and uh, yeah, we have a lot of doubts, and oh, okay. also a lot of fun. It's it's behind the scenes, it's different than the picture that we you see on on stage definitely gotcha. they're still human beings you know <laughs> yeah yeah of course of course it's like um because that's one thing i wanted to ask about is like the dark space rehearsal like a typical dark space rehearsal is it the case of like making sure everyone's connected to the click track making sure you've got all the sounds right and everything and it's a case of everyone just kind of goes for it um does, does it work that way yeah kind of yeah i mean it has to with the I mean, yeah, the machinery says where it's going. You know, it's like that's also makes it difficult with without drummer. You know, you can't like have eye contact, and if something happens in the song, this machine it just goes. 
and if 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 you if you're out you're out no it kind kind of it's kind of like that you know if if we rehearse for like uh playing live then um it's we have a set we make a set or different kind of sets and um we we have to program the whole machinery first and then uh we can start playing yeah Oh, sure. Cool. And are there like when you're um because you guys use click tracks and in ear monitors, mm -hmm. right? So do you yeah. guys have, like um, special cues uh, that help you know where the next section is? Yeah. Yes. It's oh, like you know, did 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 so then then you know okay now it's next oh. part. <laughs> and, you know, I was just thinking because I was listening to Dark Space on the drive home today. And I, I wanted to ask, is there any hidden binary code message in Dark Space Rifts? No. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, <'cause I> was... <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, it would make sense. Yeah. Given the themes of your music, do you consider Dark Space or Paysage Duve to be black metal? Hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's it's uh, for me personally, it's it's my vision of black metal. Yeah. Because, um, well, mainly I always um, connected black metal with uh, winter landscapes. That was just uh, the perfect scenery uh, for me personally. Uh, never had anything to do with, with um, Satanism, for instance, or political issues. Um, doesn't mean I'm not a political person. I'm a very political person, but it just doesn't belong there, in my opinion. And um, with Dark Space, it was, uh, all right, guys, uh, we need to have like a concept because, you know, Dark Space started more like, um, yeah, just let's do some music together. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had the Besage Diva already running at the time and um at some point i was like i would really like to to play music with other people actually and um uh so i answered uh, to a um actually it was an ad in a, a cd shop in bern and it was just really nicely uh made and and like you know with like silver liner on on black paper and stuff and i was like okay i just uh react to that and and so we we met and um that's how it started basically and in the very beginning we did have a drummer and we played some music together but for me personally i just very quickly understood that okay just just playing music just for fun uh, that's not for me mm. I, I have to have it more serious than that and uh so uh it didn't really work out with the drummer on on personal level so um we kind of kicked him out and then we were uh, four people we still had like uh, a guy on keyboards and uh, i actually shared the band room with him before at some point he was like okay guys um this doesn't work for me i i leave so it was just the three of us and we were like okay what what do we do now what do you want want to do it's it has to be something like more serious more um, substantial and um that's uh, when we tried to find some kind of uh, concept that we three were happy with and uh the other guys weren't into like this forest kind of black metal like I was <laughs> at all. So um yeah, three three very different characters and and preferences in, in music or extreme metal music, black metal even. And so we tried to find something each one of us was comfortable with. And that was like the space concept. That's actually when it's when it started. Yeah. Oh, epic. And in the early days um, in Switzerland, you know, when you guys were, you know, first starting bands and projects and stuff, what was it like in the Swiss scene? Like, how did you guys kind of break through, I guess? Like, um, what was it that trajected dark space to become, you know, quite big outside of um, Switzerland? What do you think it was? Oh, 
I really don't know. <laughs> we never had any contact with other people. There was no, no such thing like a scene, to, at least to us. You know, it was like, of course, there were other bands too and, and stuff, but we, we didn't have any contact. We were really like in, in an enclosed environment, just the band room and, and us, and, and that was it, basically. Um in the beginning it definitely helped with with the the experience i had with recording for besser stiver so um i mean minus one dark space minus one was was like yeah our demo mm. and um after that we recorded dark space one like the, the full length already and i had a few contacts uh abroad like in germany and and stuff and and yeah that's how it happened you know i mean it could have gone totally different if nobody would have been interested in our music um of course then it would be different mm. it was just um things kind of happened gotcha. and, um, with avant-garde we we um we just sent uh i think it was uh, dark space one or just the cds we had i think dark space one dark space two we, we sent to, to him and um we even um enclosed like uh 10 euros for for return postage if he would not like the cds then please return him <laughs> so uh i think that kind of impressed him <laughs> That was the only <laughs> time we actually really asked for for like you know, would would you be interested in releasing that stuff? We were quite blessed concerning this matter. We never really had to you know have a have a look or, or press things. Also with life, you know, we we people keep asking for for us to play life, and uh, we are well aware that for other bands it's it's totally different you know they they want to play live and and they just can't because uh, there's no interest and in, in stuff and it's difficult to to play shows and and find space to to uh, to be on stage and we never had that really blessed with with that yeah yeah for sure like it shows so much honesty like you you guys put in some money to like in the package as well be like hey if you don't like this then you know here's some cash in the back i think that just shows complete transparency as well and i think yeah i think that that's um a really i don't know it, i think it helped make the um the approach way more honest because i can get it like if you're if you're a label or whatever like um well, I mean, you have your own label, so you know the case of like you get your you get demos from people being like, "Hey, sign my band," when th then this was like a bit more of a different approach to it. I might be wrong, but the artwork changes on some of the reissues. Yes. Yeah. What? Why is that? Was it just because you wanted to um, separate the originals from the uh, from the reissues, or was it just the case of like was it a label thing, or how, what was it? Um. First and foremost, it was because um, the, the well, it, it's it's about the illustrations for the the vinyls, mm -hmm. the vinyl uh, versions. Um, for minus one one uh, and and dark space one, it was uh, done by uh, Benjamin uh, from uh, Lunar Aurora, mm -hmm. and uh, at some point he just didn't want to do that anymore. Right. So we had to to look for a, a, another illustrator for uh, for our vinyls, and um, we found someone here in Bern actually, and he's absolutely amazing, really great, and that that's the main reason. And so uh, also with the change label change, uh, we were like, okay, it's it's the time for it, it's the perfect timing to redo all of that for dark space 2 we had um, the same artist that did uh, the cover for invalt and that was also fine cover but but now we have like uh, um this this guy and it, it's just it's just perfect you know and for like the the old um cds like the digi packs we had like these small small pictures and these were actually made by my aunt. 
but I don't have any contact with her anymore. And I don't know if she even paints, uh, still paints. So uh, we were like, okay, we just have to, to find something new. Gotcha. Yeah. And we did luckily. Gotcha. Cause I have the, um, I have the ditty packs of um, two and three, like, like the slip cover. Mm -hmm. of I've actually got those. That, that's amazing that you, that your aunt, that your auntie um, actually made those. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. And, well, uh, you know, it's just like you. We take what what we get. It's like okay, this works. This, whatever yeah. it is. And... Yeah, and that that goes on quite nicely to uh, to a topic like to the early days of black metal, where it was the case where everyone just used what used what they had and made the absolute best of it. Exactly. And I think that has. I think that's so much more powerful than than just like i don't know it's just trying to get the best of everything i think it's i i love that this kind of like authentic homegrown kind yeah. of uh, kind of approach because it's it's so much more personal that way and yeah just using what you have and, mm -hmm. and make the best of it i think that makes a more unique product and a way more unique result because like um uh if if someone for example or if a band wants to record in a certain place or whatever um, then they might get like there's this, this certain kind of studio sound in so it's almost in a way of like using your kind of uh, own community and keeping things far more personal which gives a more yeah. personal result as well and when with the um paysage duvet um covers um most of them are, are artworks if i'm not mistaken but aren't there some that are like um like a few photos like which i can't remember which album it is but it's like a wintry landscape and then there's like a like someone walking in the distance like a black figure i've forgotten what album mm -hmm. that is well this um it's it's in different paintings actually <laughs> the, the dark figure okay it's, it's like um yeah, it's it's what what Besar Stiver is about. It's like about this person wandering through through this winter landscape. So it's uh, reoccurring. Yeah, and um, you have it in um, Das Tor, mm -hmm. and in Wald. There, it's quite mm. so people know what we're actually talking about. You yeah. see yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Gotcha. You have it. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, I can't remember which one it is, but it looked like a real photograph. Um, and I just wanted to, and then my question was really, is like, do, um, when it comes to the Passage de Vey stuff, did you take like any photographs of like yourselves or someone in a wintry landscape? Did you do anything like that for any of the artwork? Um, both. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's, uh, yeah, um, most of them are either photographs i did or uh paintings i made yeah okay so you you painted that this one is the only one i didn't oh i that's see, I did. I see, I see. That's from okay. involved so i didn't paint that one okay that's amazing though that's um that's so cool i didn't realize you you hand painted uh the art yeah. that's amazing it actually started with that it's the first thing i did was like a painting I just wanted to dive into this wintry world and um and uh after that actually came the music no yeah. so cool <laughs> cool yeah yeah i love that creating the concept making it yourself and then like making uh you know the the music for the art piece i think that's fantastic that's that's wicked and i might be pronouncing this wrong uh com completely incorrectly but um there's a song with violin. Is it Welt I aus Eis? Welt aus Eis. Yes. Yeah. Did you, was that you playing the violin on it? Yes. Okay. That's so the, That's the first instrument I actually learned. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Made it, uh, made it very easy to, um, was, was a really great foundation to learn other instruments. Except for drums, <laughs> I had a hard time uh, with drums at first. But uh, all everything else, it's 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 rather um, easy to get into, you know, to to find a connection with the instrument. Gotcha. And do you still play violin these days? Um, usually only if I record something. It's it's not uh, that I like play it on a daily basis. 
but you know it's like it's like riding a bike or skiing or something you, you just once learned you never lose it Gotcha. And w was it your decision to learn the violin as as a kid? Because I know because I know sometimes it's like the sometimes parents kind of like force a student to learn an instrument. Like, what, what, how did it start for you? <laughs> well, I wanted to learn to play guitar, Uh huh. probably because um, my dad was playing guitar, and but they were like, yeah. Well, it also had to do with school because I went to R Rudolf Steiner school or Waldorf school, as it is called in Germany, and uh, music is quite a, a big thing there. And um, they were like, no, it's why why not rather play violin? And they kind of, uh, yeah, not, they didn't force me, but, you know. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, but but now I'm I'm totally happy with it, you know, absolutely. And uh, of course, My Dying Bride was, was a huge influence for me because like they used violin in combination with the doom metal. I was like, oh, fucking great, you know. Yo. And at some point I was like, okay, uh, why not mix violin with black metal? Let's give it a try. Uh, it works perfectly. What do you think makes a song great? It has to move me. Yeah. It's like emotional. Yeah. Can be so many things. There are so many things that have to come together. You know, you have rhythm, you have melody, you have sound, uh, you have representation. What does the music represent? You know, what kind of picture does it draw within your mind? Um, difficult to say, really. I mean, uh, in in black metal, I think it's it's a a really long time ago quite a long time ago that I have discovered something that I really liked, you know, it's mainly it has been in, in other genres, actually. Okay. So I don't know. It's difficult to say really. Oh, gotcha. And what music are you listening to these days? Um, I, I don't listen that much music. Uh, if I do lately, I've been mostly listening to, um, uh, old black metal stuff <laughs> very cliche <laughs> i just uh listened to um under a funeral moon okay we had the interview <laughs> and yeah the first uh, pluto's nord what made you want to start your own label and what advice do you have for people who want to start their own label um yeah Back in the days when I when I recorded Steineich, the very first Besser Stiebe, I was very proud about it. I thought, oh, that's that's it's great. I was like, wow. <laughs> I was like, okay, there's actually only one label I would like to be on, and that was Misanthropy Records back in the time. So I sent a copy to them, never got an answer. I was devastated. <laughs> And so I was like, okay, uh, after that, I, I recorded like six demos and didn't release them at all. So at some point I was like, okay, this is, yeah, may maybe I should release it because I, I was thinking like, okay, dude, if someone like, let's say first uh, Ulva album, Bertha, if they wouldn't have released that, I would be devastated. So maybe there are like two or three guys out there that actually really like what I, I'm doing here. So um, I release it for them. And that's why I uh, started Konstal basically as a platform for, yeah, I, I could have released them without the label, just as demos, but I just wanted to have a, platform for it okay cool that's basically it but um yeah advice um be more of a business business guy and less of an artist <laughs> i'm too much of an artist i'm, I'm not a good business businessman so um uh, Kunstal is is now working under uh prophecy productions and they helped me out and i basically uh 
yeah make of course make the decisions what's going to be released and stuff but at the moment i just really don't have the time anyway so uh it's it's kind of sleepy again and it's just a besage diver platform it kind of belongs to besage diver i guess and yeah and also the other stuff doesn't really sell <laughs> <laughs> exactly like how you said is you've got to be quite business minded it's got to be like okay yeah which is not a bad thing you know and, and if, if you have a person like like martin from prophecy for instance he, he's that kind of guy you know he, he was like i tried to make music i was like i, I just can't mm. it's not for me but he's good in that in business you know and i'm the opposite <laughs> and so if you if you come together then it, it works fine yeah cool mm. and um, my last question is um, what advice do you have for bands and guitarists you know i was i was always um wondering why is it so difficult or it seems to be difficult for so many people to to have uh, something unique to create something unique i think i could have had like 10 bands you know or just like okay you guys do this and that's your thing like concepts you know do do your own concept make make really think about what you want to tell with your music it really makes sense and within so you you, you have a frame and within that frame you can you can experiment. You will you will find uh, your sound. But you, if you have a clear picture, okay, we want to make music about space, winter. It's, it's very simple, you know. You can have, like, very simple, uh, clear picture. It's it's almost like uh, it's marketing, basically. <laughs> it's, it's nothing else. I mean, uh, any any brand has, like, like a clear logo a clear picture a clear emotion what they want to transport that really helps also for yourself you know to have like you you can focus on it and you you don't go like here or there or everywhere unless that's your concept <laughs> to go everywhere but it's kind of a difficult concept it's too big narrow it down to something you really want something that that you burn for like full on 100 percent, yeah because i think that's so so important now because there's so there's a whole array of bands and styles in the black metal uh, hmm. blanket if you will but it's a case of how how many bands are actually that unique now yeah. And bands are really really standing out from the rest like what is mm -hmm. what is your band like like you said marketing and business in a way what's the band's unique selling point but at mm -hmm. the same time keeping it really core to to your heart yeah. and your intentions and stuff because yeah, absolutely because you can still that's, that's very important you know even with marketing and business it sounds so cold yeah. and emotionless yeah you can do that but with music it won't work yeah and and this is the thing because it, it has to be something that's really true to your to to yourself and and your own mm -hmm. concept and your own kind of ideals and stuff because that is how the authenticity is built absolutely uh, that's um absolutely. what it is yeah and you have to you have to build absolutely 100 percent to believe in what you're doing absolutely and if you don't um People will will see it. People will feel it. And also, I, I I don't understand how that could be any give you any satisfaction as a musician, honestly. But that's my opinion. I might be different with that. But that's that's definitely stay true to yourself. One hundred percent. So that's yeah. I mean, in black metal, it was always a big thing with like sellout. You know. Uh, I have heard that from from about my music too. Like, okay, whatever, because like people buy my records. Uh, I'm happy that that uh, okay, there are more than 
two or three guys who actually like my music. I don't have my goal isn't to become a rock star. You know, it's it's not my goal isn't to sell as many albums as possible. Not at all. I just want to to make my music. I have I I don't want to. I have to. It's an urge. I, it's it's self therapy <laughs> for me. You know, it's just that's still here. If it wouldn't, I would stop. You know, I don't make albums to oh people will will probably like this. You know. So also uh, as an advice, uh, keep experimenting. It's 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 a great fun. You will discover th uh, stuff. Um, many things, in, especially in dark space, actually happened out of uh, coincidences. You know, it wasn't meant that way. It was just like, oh, okay, that's cool. We take it. Thank you to whoever or whatever. <laughs> you know. There's also always a, a certain as esoteric aspect to it. You can't explain. It's it's there, and you can even feel it or something. But just yeah, be be grateful for it, and it, it's okay. It's it's not like oh, I'm the musician, I'm the mastermind, and I do everything. No, it's it doesn't work like that. It's, it's a lot of just like okay, where where did this just come from? I always said it's it's I, I don't feel like I'm really the creator of it. I'm I'm more the um uh, the medium that flows through me. But I'm not it doesn't come from me. It's whilst flowing through me, it takes a lot of me with it, but it's it's not really me. Yeah. It's how it feel how it feels to me. Gotcha. Whatever it is. Yeah, I guess a bit of an esoteric way to explain it is like, I don't know, being a vessel for this kind of musical spirit, but then like the musical spirit goes through you and you're the vessel that makes the music, like in, in a very, very kind of metaphorical way of putting it. Yeah, you could, you could exactly say it like that. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's, it takes the personality from you with, with it. So it's, it's in the end product music. But like the, the core where it really comes from is like, I don't know, some neutral ground, some energy. I don't know. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like um, music is extremely special because it's one of the only things that kind of makes people human in a way. Um, you know, you don't have like, you don't have any, any kind of like animal that makes... Uh, Kind of music they do musical things but like when it comes to like making music i think that's one of the i guess special powers that we as as, as humans have the, uh, yeah i would say art in general yeah art, yeah art, art and music in general yeah for sure yeah that's 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 even better 